This video is on key features of functions. Some of these words you've already heard and some of them are new, but let's look at this graph here and talk about the domain. You know that the domain is all the possible values of x, so let's look along the x-axis and see what's happening, where our graph is. As I start at the left, which I always should, start all the way to the left, and stop when you get to the first place that you actually have something on your graph. And I hope you see that when you get to negative 2, that's the first time that my graph begins. And so our domain begins at negative 2, and we're going to use some interval notation to show that. We're including negative 2 because there is a point there. Remember, domain is x's. I don't care how high this point is or if it was down here. I don't care anything about where it is except that on the x-axis, that's where the graph starts. Now, I keep going on the x-axis, and I'm still um, have looking at the graph somewhere. Everywhere from the x-axis, I could go up, in this case, and hit the graph. Once I get to 4, my x stops. In other words, if I went to 5, if I went up, I wouldn't touch the graph anymore. So the last possible value for x for this graph is 4. And it's including 4, so I'm going to put a square bracket. Sometimes it's easier to do this if you take a sheet of paper and move it along the x-axis so that you're blocking part of the graph. And once you can't see the graph anymore, as you move it to the right, you know you're done. And wherever the x-axis is, it, wherever you are on the x-axis, that's your number. So we'll practice doing that maybe with paper in class. But right now you focus on where your graph is and you're just giving the x values. So between here and here is where my graph is. For range, you're looking at y. And again, you always start at the most negative and you go up until you hit your graph. And I notice that I begin to touch my graph here when y is 1. And so my range begins at 1. And now I'm going to keep going up and I have points, if I go left or right, that correspond to my graph. So 2 is a good number for my range. 3 is a good number for my range. 4 is a good number for my range. I still have corresponding x values when I'm at 4 on the y-axis. But 4 is where it stops. And so we're going to close the interval notation here with square brackets. Because if I went past 4, there would be no corresponding point on the graph beyond the 4. Maximum and minimum, we often say max and min. And those are just either the highest point or the lowest point on the graph. You don't have to have a max or a minimum. If there are arrows on both ends, like a line, then there is no max and min. And if that was the case, you would just write no max or no min. But in this case, you're looking for the top or the bottom, as with any graph. In this case, the graph has two maximums. They're exactly the same. The maximum is the highest point. The highest I ever go for this graph is 4, and it's the same here and here, so I don't have to list it twice. The max is 4. It's the highest the graph goes. What's the lowest the graph goes? The lowest is 1. Notice these aren't ordered pairs. While they could be, I'm really just interested in how tall or how short, how high or how low, and so it's just the number from the y-axis that tells me how high or how low. The intercepts, we're talking about the x and the y intercepts. And you know what these are. Remember that it doesn't have to touch the x or the y-axis, and so you have to look at your graph carefully. Keep in mind that if the graph goes on forever, that the point you're looking for might exist, it just might not show on your picture. 
In this case, I see a y-intercept here. This is the y-axis, and the y-intercept is the point 0, 1. So the y-intercept is the point 0, 1. If I look for the x-intercept, I see that this particular graph doesn't touch the x-axis at all, and so I'm going to say that there's no x-intercept. If you were to leave this blank on a quiz or a test, I might think you don't know what an x-intercept is. So it's important for you to say that there isn't one, if there isn't, if you don't see one. The same thing with a max or a min. If there wasn't one that existed on that particular graph, you need to say there is none or none or some, something to indicate you know what it means, it just doesn't exist in this problem. Intervals of increase, decrease, and constant. This is definitely new to you. And so I want to start by talking to you about the concept of what increasing, decreasing, and constant means. We talk about these intervals as we go from left to right. And that means in the same way you read from left to right, you have to decide increasing or decreasing as you're walking from left to right. So pretend you're walking on the line. You start on the left. And if I was walking on this line, would I be going downhill or uphill? Of course, I'm sure you said downhill. It's decreasing. It starts at negative 2. And where do I stop decreasing? Be careful. I bet a bunch of you are thinking 1. When you give intervals of increase and decrease, you are going to give me the number from the x-axis only. And so I put a box around the x-axis to remind us that those are the only numbers that you give for these intervals ever. You never tell me the y coordinates. I'm not interested in how high or how low. I want to know where on the x-axis the interval is, or the graph is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So for some of you, it will help to sort of draw a dashed line every time the graph changes direction. And let's see, I can do that here with a tool. If I draw a line, this is the start. So if I put a line here, that'll help me separate my intervals. The, the graph changes direction here too. It stops decreasing and becomes a flat line, a constant. So I'm going to put another line there. And we have a change in direction again. It's no longer flat. It starts to increase here. So I'll put another line. And it stops here. And since it's an actual stop and it's not an arrow, I'm going to put a line there as well. All right. Look at my separation here. Between these green lines, my function is decreasing. Between these green lines, my function is constant, meaning it stays the same. And between these green lines, my function is increasing. All you have to do now is give the interval. And you, use, you do interval notation to do that. So for increasing, I look at my increasing. This is the uphill one. And I look at my x values, and I see that it increases from 2 to 4. And so I'm going to always use square brackets here so I don't confuse it with an ordered pair. And this tells me that it increases between 2 and 4. Decreasing happened in this first um, separation here. And it starts at negative 2 if I look at the x-axis, and it ends at 0. And so I'm going to write negative 2 to 0. So all these little boxing the x-axis and drawing these vertical lines, they're very visual. They're really going to help if you bother to do them. A lot of students tend to have trouble with intervals. But if you use these tools, I promise you it will be easier. Maybe not easy, but easier. So the constant interval is this one because it's a flat line. 
and the interval goes from 0 to 2 because I'm only describing the x's here. So everywhere from 0 to 2 is my constant interval. Okay, the last part of this is end behavior. End behavior asks you to describe what is happening to the graph as you go in one direction or the other direction. So end behavior is often written like um, as x, and then it uses this, x arrow infinity. It means as x approaches infinity, so x is this axis. If I'm moving to the right, can you tell me what's happening to my graph? I hope you said the graph starts to go up. As x approaches infinity, y, which is how high, right? y approaches, and now it stops, doesn't it? So we're going to use a number here. Often, if there's an arrow, you're just going to say infinity. But here, since it stops, as I move to the right, x is approaching infinity, but y approaches 4. That's as high as it goes, it stops. What happens as x approaches negative infinity? What does that mean? Well, negative infinity is to the left. If I'm moving left, my graph, it's also increasing, right? If I'm moving left, it sure is. Now remember, this was different here. It was decreasing because we're moving left and right. But this is asking for x as it approaches negative infinity. So it's telling me walk this way and what's happening. y is also approaching 4. Now that gets a little confusing, but we're going to practice it. It will be okay, I promise. This next screen just discusses maximum and minimum in a little more depth. You might be asked to give what's called the extrema. An extrema just refers to the maximum or minimum or both on any graph. And so I need you to know that word extrema and know that they're just asking you for the top or the bottom. That's all max and min are. Collectively, we say that max and min are called extrema. So think of the word extreme, the highest or the lowest. And you see on this graph, they give us what's called relative maxima and relative minima. And all that means is in this piece of the graph, this is the top, but it's not the top of the whole graph. And on this piece of the graph, this is the top. So when they put the word relative in front, it's just relative to the part of the graph they're looking at. And it, the, these are important words to know because we're never sure when you're going to be asked that type of question. All right, for this graph that comes next, I want you to pause the video and just try to describe the increasing and decreasing behavior. So you can write on the graph, increasing, decreasing. Remember, start on the left, move to the right when you're doing that. Also describe the other key features, domain, range, max or min, intercepts, and end behavior. I want you to pause the video and give these a shot now. Don't be afraid to be wrong. It's better to try and be wrong than not to try at all. When you're ready, restart the video and we'll see how you did and make any corrections that are necessary. All right, I want you to check your work. We'll discuss the answers in class but let's see how you did. There's a short summary here. Well, it's really notes. Um, I think that you probably need more than just the example. You need a place to be able to look up what each of these terms means. And so make sure you copy these into your notes. Do a little highlighting maybe of the main um, word so that you can find it easily when you need to, and we'll practice this more together in class.